Thanks, so I'll be back. Uh, oops. Okay. Uh, so let me check. Oh, it's a little bit better. Um, so before going further, I, I want to be back on the differences between uh, the plus construction and the Q construction. So allow me a few seconds to clean the <laughs> ground. Uh, and uh, OK, so on this side, I, I put the Q construction. And on the other side of the blackboard, the plus construction. And they have absolutely nothing to do So uh, here, uh, you, you have, of course, two Rivich map. Not exactly, uh, they are not the same because there is a looping between them. Uh, and uh, they're, 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 well, they, they have more or less the same type of torsions on both sides, because the torsions, in fact, uh, only depend uh, of, the, of the quality of your space. More it is connected, less torsion you have. I mean, the smaller the torsion is. And this is, this is one of the rules of the game. So uh, if, uh, for instance, it, if instead of using GL, you use SL, you increase connectiveness. So it means you decrease the size of the kernel. If uh, you go even further with uh, the Steinberg group, you increase again one times the connectiveness. So it means, again, you decrease a little bit the torsion. Unfortunately, on the, on the algebraic side, you cannot go further because you do not have a, a, a simple, well, simple is not the correct word, let's say a gentle group that you can put further Steinberg. But from the topological aspect, those are nothing else than just first layer of Postnikov uh, de tower decomposition. So you can just increase the, the, the tower and go from one connected to two connected, three connected, four connected, and so on. And you will decrease then again the size of the Urevich map. So the game is fairly easy once you know how it works with a Postnikov tower decomposition. But the problem after is that you need to control uh, what you get from the kernel of the Urevich map and to control it and to, let's say, to put it in a relationship with the K theory that you are interested in. OK. So it's, I mean, it's a game that you already know. I mean, uh, sometimes you have machinery which uh, help you to, to do some stuff. But at some point, you need to connect the machinery with your real problem. OK. So the nice thing is that you get the homology of GL or SL or something else. And you can connect it with the stabilization morphism. Uh, for instance, in the case of uh, number rings and number fields, and if you work rationally, you know that the map by uh, Borel Young, you know that the map are injective, for instance. And, but nevertheless, you could get some nice integral results. So for instance, uh, because the topology is nice uh, for K2, and then you you get this result. So it means that you can compute the H2 of GLR. And this is for any ring. Uh, by computing the K2 of R and uh, the, the, the wedge 2 of K1R. So as I said uh, this morning, if R is commutative, then, then it's just the, the, the inversible one. And here, by if again your ring is uh, nice enough, uh, you can stabilize it. And uh, you can go down to uh, maybe H2, GL2, for instance. But the problem is that already with H3, H4, the game on this side is starting to be more complicated. For H3, you can get several pieces. H4, H5 is really starting to be nasty. Okay. On the other hand, on the 
let's say, the Q construction side. So you have this uh, nice interplay between the homology of BQ to the homology of GL and A Steinberg by Quillen, and then by you get uh, this object, which is interesting. So you can, in fact, formally speaking, connect both. Again, for Z, a numbering, something else. But here, borel I mean, the, the natural setting of borel is arithmetic. Okay, so it's more natural to consider type of rings, for instance, or uh, even fields. Okay, but here, what is more interesting is that we have, a, a, let's say, a computational machinery, which allows you to compute completely this guy uh, in order to compute either all the cohomology here or to compute part again of the torsion of this guy. Okay, completely. Because if not, maybe it was uh, somehow the, the, the point also, also the discussion. Indeed, why you would have interest in those group? Okay, in fact, you, the interest of, of those groups is because they appear in several places. They are ubiquitous, and uh, and they are in general easier to compute than uh, others. This is why we prefer this side as much as we we can, because even if I explain, it is still difficult to. Uh, to investigate all the pieces on the homology of VQ, it is nevertheless far more easier than dealing directly with the other side from the plus construction. But nevertheless, we could exploit uh, this construction and get some properties on torsion elements, on some uh, cyclic subgroup, on the divisible group, for instance. Uh, the, divisible, the maximal divisible group from the K theory and stuff like that. So it is possible to exploit all those properties from this side. And uh, so I will put a reference, uh, I will add in, in the reference a nice survey from Dominic Arletta, which illustrates all these sides and what we can, uh, what we can do uh, from it. Okay. So, oh. c'est annulé, enregistré. <laughs> Don't press annulé. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. The blue button. Can you enregistrer? Enregistré? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh no. And uh, you swipe to the right. You swipe to the sorry. <laughs> Three fingers swipe to the right. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to, okay. No, but I mean. Just. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's not as hard as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very disturbing. So, how it is possible to relate? those results with k theory. So it's, um, I mean, the yoga is, uh, you go through etal k theory, from etal k theory, you go to etal cohomology, and in fact, from etal k, from cohomology, you relate directly to this. So this is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, what can be done. It uses plenty of results, by the way. It's not, not at all so trivial. Um, uh, and it's the, you end up with a, with a group, uh, well, with several groups. So some of them are easy to compute, and some are not at all easy to compute. And of course, the m one which is the less easy to compute is of course the one which interests you for the Kummer van der conjecture, and if you believe that the, the conjecture is true. Okay, so I'm going to to pass this. For now, maybe I, I, I will be back. Uh, I will be back uh, later. But I, I uh, please read it and try to understand what this definition means. You can consider it an exercise, but it's fairly easy. I mean, it's just 
it, I mean, it's just weights from an eigenvalue decomposition. So in some sense, they are just eigenspace, except that here we are in abelian, with abelian groups. OK, but it's similar to uh, eigenspace decomposition. And uh, uh, this uh, point of view is uh, interesting for the Van Duer conjecture is now we, we can have a, a, an asymptotic interpretation of the, the Van Duer conjecture, allowing the, the prime to go at the infinity. And uh, it turns out that it is possible to give some information on the asymptotic side, even if at the end, of course, that it remains a part, some strip, in some sense, uh, where the conjecture could be wrong. And some people believe that this conjecture to be wrong. OK, uh, so I will be back on this. So this is a summary of what we know. Uh, what we know about uh, those, uh, those groups, so of course, the part uh, which uh, is purely computational. I mean, you can use PARI and you can check the conjecture, by the way, of course. And you just uh, allow the computer to run, and you will get a, a new value where you have checked the cumulative van der conjecture. OK, but then the other part are general results and use require uh, quite, quite some work. So to summarize, I, I will be back okay, on this result, but to summarize what are the tools which are used from here to here, you have either you, uh, you, you provide direct computations, well, <laughs> okay, direct computation, but not of this type. Um, you provide explicit computations using the model, uh, a little bit like the ones that just uh, explain uh, uh, Paul with uh, the Charlie complex, or you use knowledge on the, the homology of uh, DL with coefficient of the Stenberg group for some specific uh, grade. Well, let's say low dimensional values of this group, so meaning high dimensional value of the cohomology uh, of uh, GLN, in order to deduce some piece which interplay with uh, the K-theory side and hoping to be able to deduce the, uh, let's say, the integral value of the K, uh, K, K for N, K for N, Z. But uh, again, here, in order to really prove that it is zero, you will have to deal with the Urevich map. So, as I said this morning, so I, I, I want to speak about another, uh, another useful object which connects uh, cohomology of groups with number theory and with, let's say, uh, a well-known topological uh, tool. Because uh, I think that you all know the Euler characteristic of a polytope or Euler characteristic uh, of a topological space. This is something that uh, uh, you can define formally uh, uh, using uh, homology, I mean, homology of the space. So for me, when, when, I, when I speak of a topological space, I always have in mind a CW complex, meaning a cellular uh, decomposition of the space. Not necessarily simplicial. I do not necessarily care about barycentric uh, subdivision. In particular, I mean, it is a very nice tool from a, uh, uh, from a theoretical uh, viewpoint. But from a computational viewpoint, it's, uh, a, it's, it's a machine which increases uh, complexity uh, by a very large order of magnitude. So you have to be very careful by you in using this uh, when you want to uh, perform explicit computation. So this is, a, let's say, the traditional uh, uh, Euler, uh, Euler characteristic uh, for a topological space. So you, you define it uh, using the, the rank on uh, 
the homology of the chain complex associated to the, to the space. And uh, from it, you can, uh, let's say, you can generalize it uh, to a, a large family uh, of space. And uh, so, in particular, of course, I mean, you recover the, uh, let's say, the naive definition of the Euler characteristic of a topological space as alternative sum of the number of cells uh, of high dimensional cells. Uh, okay. So now we want to, to have it for groups. So what we uh, can do is uh, again play the game of the classifying space and uh, to connect it with the, 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 the topological uh, of the space. Uh, so for instance, you can start with setting which is very close to the one that we have for arithmetic groups. So you have uh, a, a, a space, uh, a CW complex, on which you have uh, an action of a group the action of this group is cellular, so it is compatible with the CW uh, complex structure. And so, uh, assuming that the, the quotient is uh, well defined uh, enough and nice enough, you can define the, uh, let's say, the characteristic of the, sp of the space uh, in terms of the quotient and in terms, in fact, of the uh, order of the, of the group, is if you assume that the group is finite, but then after you will go from finite to, uh, to, uh, to infinite. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, so what I wanted to say, I wanted to say first that uh, if you have a, a free group, it is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fairly simple uh, to, uh, to define the characteristic of this free group. Uh, I mean, if you, you have a free group of rank n, you, just, uh, defi you can just define uh, the characteristic of uh, gamma uh, as to be uh, 1 minus n. And uh, uh, and if uh, and if the, the, the group is uh, free abelian, uh, you could say that uh, it is, uh, the characteristic is zero. Then, uh, so assuming uh, that the group is uh, and assuming that. Uh, but for, for us, it, it is not. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, you, you, it is easy to uh, manage uh, this uh, this constraint, and uh, assuming that uh, 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 gamma prime is a sub subgroup of finite index, then uh, you can prove that the have, that you have this relation. That the characteristic uh, of uh, in the Euler characteristic of gamma prime uh, is uh, the the index of gamma prime is gamma times the, the Euler characteristic of gamma. And uh, so already from this uh, theorem, you can uh, deduce some uh, interesting uh, property on the. Let's say the p-divisibility of the of the characteristic of the Euler characteristic with respect to the uh, let's say p-torsion of the group, and uh, from it we can uh, extend the uh, the definition formally to uh, uh, arbitrary group, in particular including with torsion. So what you do is uh, so, uh, 
you say is that um, uh, uh, yeah, what I want to say is that uh, if gamma uh, an arbitrary group, always assuming the, the same hypothesis, and uh, if you choose uh, a torsion any any torsion free subgroup of gamma prime uh, gamma prime uh, of gamma, then you can define it as a rational number, as this way, and. Uh, uh, you can show, well, essentially due to the Lagrange type uh, formula, uh, uh, that it does not depend of the chosen uh, uh, gamma prime. So, does this definition uh, is uh, is well defined, and uh, it, allo it allows to uh, to in particular, to compute the, the, the Euler characteristic for a finite group, because in this case, we can just take a gamma prime to be one. And as a result, it turns out that the, the Euler characteristic of finite group is just one over the order uh, gamma. And so, uh, so, What is interesting already with this, uh, this definition is uh, that we can apply it for to SL2Z, uh, for instance, and uh, using the, the, the description uh, of SL2Z as an amalgamated uh, sum from Serre, and from it, uh, it, is, uh, it could have been uh, an exercise for uh, exercise session. So you can uh, easily prove that the Euler characteristic of SL2Z is uh, just uh, minus one over 12. Not surprising. Okay. Likely remind you something. So now, more generally, we uh, uh, we. Yeah. Well, no, no, well, yeah. Here, you do not use at all the, the zeta, zeta function. But it turns out that, yes, it is related to, uh, okay. to the zeta function. Yeah. But you can compute it without yeah. this. Uh, yeah. Your yeah, 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 <laughs> of course. Uh, so now, uh, if you are back to, uh, to your Well, to our arithmetic group setting, uh, where we are always on this, meaning that we have a group with, let's say, almost all the good properties. We have a space on which uh, uh, a space which is a, a CW complex with a very nice properties, and uh, uh, we have also a nice action. And now uh, we can compute the, the isotropy group for all cells. Uh, and it turns out that all the isotropy, isotropy group, sorry, uh, well, the stabilizer of the cells uh, will have uh, the, uh, uh, the correct property. And in, in our case, we, we do not have an infinite CW complex. In fact, for each uh, dimension, so it means we have uh, only finitely many cells. In fact, we have even finite number of cells. So. Okay. And so the Euler characteristic of the group will be defined as this object. I mean, it corresponds uh, really to, uh, to what we, uh, we, we have described. But then, of course, uh, now, uh, I mean, uh, those are, our, let's say, If uh, your uh, if your CW complex is uh, is explicit, you can compute this this part. Okay, here you have uh, just uh, the set of representatives for the cells. You can compute the stabilizers. Uh, let's say that, for instance, in the Voronoi uh, case, 
all the stabilizer will be finite. So you will have the, character, the earlier characteristic uh, of uh, your stabilizer. And so this part is, let's say, fairly explicit as long as you have an explicit description of your complex. So you are happy with the right side. But now, if, uh, so of course you can say, why am I wandering with this? Because I have the right side, so it means that I am able to compute this. And you are, of course, perfectly right. But what is very interesting is uh, you can use this formula. Well, so suppose that you have another way to compute the layer characteristic, to connect it to something else, completely independent of this setting. So it means that you have here, you have this formula which is uh, explicit from the computation of your complex. And then you have another formula on the right side, which is completely unrelated to the computations of your complex. So what it means from uh, a computational point of view, that you have a way to check your computations. And this is where it is very useful. That's why I'm caring about, about this. So, okay, so now, what can we say about this, uh, this earlier characteristic of a group? Well, we have formula, well, we have, uh, whoops, that's, that's weird, whoops. Yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, so we can write it for, for instance, uh, SLNZ. We end up with this formula. I mean, I, mean ju I just plug uh, SLNZ. I have nothing, like, uh, nothing more. So it is purely formal. Okay. And then uh, what I uh, would like to know is uh, what is uh, the what is the exact value of this. And here we have a famous uh, work uh, and famous paper of Harder uh, called the Gauss Bonnet uh, formula. And uh, it turns out that uh, using uh, the, the work of Harder, it is possible to deduce an explicit value, depending on the group, which is here, uh, for the layer characteristic of your arithmetic groups. Okay, but, okay. And several, it could be a root of lattices, it could be a symplectic uh, group, it could be many things. Uh, Okay, so here you have a few examples. Uh, for instance, you have the earlier characteristic of uh, the root lattice uh, E7, which corresponds to uh, the group of autom automorphism of uh, E7 also. So again, with our best friend. Uh, if we compute it for, the, uh, for E6, we, uh, we get zero. We have this uh, nice formula for the, uh, the 2n symplectic group of uh, Oka, where k is a, is a number field, and Oka uh, is a ring uh, of uh, integer. Uh, and uh, this ap when those applications, I think, were pointed out by, uh, by Serre. So in, the, in a reference, which is not so well known, by the way, that I put in, uh, in my list. And so the, you have uh, this uh, uh, nice formula. And, uh, uh, oops, and, and, okay, and then, so I, I, will, I will be back, uh, I, I wanted to have the, the formula that I want, but uh, it is not there, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's really... Uh, Okay, there is one, sorry, one slide has disappeared. So, uh, in, in the same way, we, uh, we could compute using uh, uh, harder work the, uh, the, character, the layer characteristic of uh, SLNZ for, for all N, and then indeed 
we will have a, a product of uh, uh, negative zeta values. And uh, so for n equal to, we will recover the, the value which was just computed before, minus 1 over 12. But then after, it, we will get 0, because all the special values which are involved are 0. Okay. And uh, what it means, it means that this, uh, uh, this guy, so it means that you have, uh, in general, a very large alternative sum of fractions will be equal to zero. So you have a very fancy, non-trivial way to write down zero. But uh, 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 as you will see uh, uh, later, uh, it is also, and I insist on, on it, very useful in order to check that you, uh, uh, you computed uh, uh, correctly all the Voronoi complex. Uh, okay, so uh, so it is also possible to uh, to uh, to use this um, uh, earlier characteristic to uh, to deduce some uh, interesting property on on the roof. Uh, so you will see uh, several uh, references. Uh, so it shows that it is also an, an interesting tool uh, from the, uh, let's say, the arithmetic uh, viewpoint. So, uh, yeah, so, so we, are, we are going to recover the, what uh, I was uh, speaking a few minutes ago. Uh, Okay, so in fact, those properties are uh, are a consequence of the uh, the layer characteristic uh, of the uh, of uh, yeah. Of, uh, 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 the, the IT sign or uh, that I mean that's already adjoining the three roots, but then you can do that then again for Yeah, in well not not necessarily Kummer van Diver, but yeah, we will it's it, um, we get we get some things that uh, let's say uh, uh, general generalize some uh, uh, I mean, some, some uh, uh, um, what can you say, uh, Kummer or congruences uh, uh, using, uh, using this, uh, this solar characteristic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not, I, I will not go that far to say that it generalizes a uh, uh, Kummer van Diver type conjecture, but okay, but that's a, yeah, yeah. You say that, uh, that the K theory of, of SLN OK has something to do with uh, the same kind of cl uh, class groups for other number field extensions for the for extensions of Oh, man, in, in this way, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but it's, uh, yeah, but in fact, again, it's. Uh, 
let's say it's interesting because again on the topological side you have also the, those numbers which are hidden. And uh, so it's possible to uh, to recover uh, some properties uh, both at the level of the K theory, at the level of the Euler characteristic, and at the level of let's say some invariance or some divisibility properties uh, uh, on the level of the homotopy group or some topological space which are associated to those guys. Um, yeah, it's uh, okay. It's uh, an interesting uh, uh, viewpoint, but uh, it's um, in part it is discussed uh, in the reference that I pointed out uh, a few minutes ago uh, about uh, the survey par l'état, for instance. OK. But mainly, the, the, the what, what I wanted to, uh, uh, to emphasize on, on this slide was mainly, the, let's say, the construction of the, the layer characteristic of a group and how it, we can use it for uh, inner setting. OK. So, uh, uh, so this slide, uh, more or less, uh, generalize. I mean, summarize uh, what I explain on the on the Q construction, the Q construction side. Okay, what we are interested in is uh, to detect high torsion class, and uh, we know that uh, this high torsion class exists because of uh, results for, from K theory. We are interested uh, in, uh, in the, the rank of the cohomology. Uh, and uh, then uh, we, uh, we want to apply it again in order to get uh, further information, I mean uh, arithmetical information, on the, the KF theory. So mainly uh, P torsion, uh, or describe some uh, some part of the K-theory in terms of split group or so on. And uh, if we, we can, and as I said this morning, it is uh, the, the most difficult part to uh, identify explicit elements. And, and you will see that it is very difficult because I, I will show you an element which is explicit, even several elements which are explicit on, let's say, the Voronoi side but which are very likely to correspond to, uh, let's say, some well-known elements on the K-theoretic side. But, uh, I mean, we have currently no way to prove it. Okay. And, of course, uh, the, the final goal is to be able to uh, deduce uh, some arithmetical results, like, for instance, the Van Der conjecture or other types uh, of, uh, of conjectures. So, in the, in the last, uh, last minutes uh, of my talks, so I, I just want to, uh, uh, to be back on the setting uh, for the uh, in order next time to, uh, to really uh, uh, go on really on the technical side. Uh, so because, I mean, you have seen uh, several times <laughs> this definition. I, uh, so I just, uh, OK, maybe uh, try to uh, confuse you with uh, other notations. Uh, OK. And uh, also, I, for, for simplicity reason, uh, I will only consider the Euclidean model, the Euclidean Voronoi model. And uh, even if at some point I will mention results for the Hermitian one and will explain some differences uh, between uh, the, uh, the, two, uh, the two models. But mainly they work really alike. I mean, the, and the geometry is of course not the same, but the mathematics behind it is almost the same. 
OK, so, so I do hope that I, at least I have the same notations on Paul. Uh, well, not, but at least for uh, that I'm not uh, uh, switching uh, uh, some notation. Uh, so EV is a vector. So again, I, I will uh, define. So uh, at V, the, the graph uh, vector is set up to, uh, uh, to V. So I guess that this is uh, what Paul uh, not. I think Paul denoted QV, I think. Okay. But we are in the same same space. So of course, I mean this the, the space or uh, I mean we will be always in, in, in a space which looks like that, even in the Hermitian case. Okay. Because at the end you have uh, just polyhedron. Okay, so you have just real polyhedron. Uh, so I will uh, as uh, it was explained by uh, Renaud Coulangeon uh, last week, uh, I will use uh, uh, both viewpoints, either the geometric one or the algebraic one for, uh, let's say, uh, quadratic forms and associated lattice. So sometimes I will speak of lattice and sometimes I will speak of a quadratic form, but they are the same object for me. Uh, and so, in particular, when they are perfect forms, so of course, I mean the setting is is done uh, specifically for uh, for perfect forms and perfect lattices. Uh, so, uh, if H is a, uh, a perfect form, uh, we will look at we will define M H as a set of minimal vectors, and uh, uh, M H at will be the convex all of the, uh, uh, the family of gram vectors uh, given by the minimal vector. So it corresponds to, uh, uh, in fact, the, the, the perfect cone associated to the perfect form H. So geometrically, it will be uh, mainly the, the, the same object. And uh, remember the, the, the main property, and I mean this property is, is very important, that uh, when we uh, deal with a perfect lattice and perfect form, so it means that the set of uh, minimal vectors in the symmetric space always spans the symmetric space. So it's, uh, you can use it as definition for being, uh, for being a perfect form. And of course, this is uh, very easy to check. Modulo the computation. I mean, it's just a wrong computation. Uh, and uh, you even do not need to, to perform the computation over Z. I mean, you can uh, compute it uh, as uh, real numbers. Again, as uh, uh, Alexander Hülke has insisted, uh, even if uh, most of the time maybe I will use a geometric uh, description of the object, when you program it and when, when you compute with it, you always have a matrix representation of it. Okay. But they are the same. So if, for instance, I, I write down a, a differential, from a mathematical point of view, okay, it will, for an abstract point of view, it will be the same than, than choosing a basis and write down the differential as matrices. Because, of course, it is the way that is done uh, inside a, a computer. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what uh, explain uh, uh, explain Renault uh, last week without the, the picture of Renault. Uh, so this is the added value. Uh, and, uh, and 
seeing that now you, you, you got uh, the fact that uh, the main property is that if you take all the equivalent classes of perfect forms of same rank, uh, you get a, a nice polytope of RNN plus one with an action of GLNZ and uh, for which you have a CW uh, structure on it. So of course, I mean, the CW structure is not from Voronoi, uh, but it's for us, it is a, a, a crucial property uh, because uh, uh, we, we need, uh, let's say, a compact and co-compact uh, properties in order to, uh, to apply the machinery, because if not, uh, uh, things will be uh, uh, difficult. So here we, uh, okay, maybe there are already some subtleties, subtleties in uh, in the model. Uh, uh, maybe. And uh, yeah, subtlety. So uh, we will, uh, because why, why is there the, the subtlety? I mean, the, the, uh, uh, and something which is uh, explained on, on, on the other, other slides that, and this is the main difference with the, the borel uh, model. If you work directly with the, the, the borel cell compactification, you do not have this problem. But here, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, important to get it. And in particular, in somehow it's also the reason why the homology of Steinberg is coming out from it. So, in the space, so you see, um, we will consider, so if I use, so if a V is a minimal vector of some uh, perfect form, so QV, so V, uh, v transpose, uh, is not necessarily positive, but not definite. And uh, in uh, in the uh, in the in the global set uh, of. Um, that we will uh, we will consider. I mean, in the, the, the all uh, con. I mean, cn. Uh, uh, not cn. Oh, sorry, the the star one. Uh, we uh, so let's say the, the good one. Uh, the, the good object on which we uh, will be happy to work on is this one. So the set of, uh, let's say, the real uh, definite uh, positive quadratic form. This is the one uh, who interests us. But in fact, we are going to, to work on an extended one which is the, the set of all, let's say, uh, positive quadratic form. Well, let's say non-negative because you can. So it means that here uh, you have no, no non-negative part, but of course here you have degenerative part. In particular, you have, I mean, the, the, you have cusp in this, okay? But the problem uh, that uh, 
at some points, you, you need to uh, catch up with uh, the, the real model. So it means that you need to get rid of all the cups. And this is why you need uh, to consider the, uh, in fact, the, the, the right? So, so Xn is the same than uh, Cn. It suggests it's, uh, it's Cn mod out by homothesis. Of course, I'm positive homothesis because you, you want to keep the cone. Uh, and uh, uh, Xn, so it's this mod homothesis. And uh, this Xn. Is this again modulo homothesis, or again I insist only uh, the, the, the positive uh, homothesis? Okay, and so the good guy is this, this one, but we are not going to work directly on this guy. We are going to work on this guy, and the reason is uh, very simple: it's because we don't know how to work directly on this guy, and this one. We, uh, I mean, this guy, this one. So you work on C and not on A. No, on on the star we work on the C, the star. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. because this is the Voronoi part. In fact. Okay. And in somehow this part is the Borel Ser part. It's not directly, I mean, you, you need to. Okay. And in fact, the real space, what we are computing is this one. Modulo the frontier. Okay. And here, when you perform this, uh, topologically, you, you are let's say, homotopic, automi, homo, homo, homotopically extend uh, to uh, the, uh, the other one. And we can, of course, make everything uh, rigorous at this, uh, at this point. So, of course, I mean, the action of uh, GLN, SLN, or uh, any uh, finite in, uh, index uh, subgroup of GLN is given uh, by the, the standard action on quadratic form. Okay, and this is uh, uh, pretty standard. So of course, uh, if we, you are dealing uh, with uh, uh, with the Hermitian case, you need uh, to add a conjugation here. And and. Uh, Okay, and so in, in order to uh, to build the the, the complex, uh, and uh, you will see it, uh, details uh, in more details to well, in details tomorrow. Uh, you need to have uh, all the all the class of perfect forms. In, in order to have the, the, the full geometry of the complex. Meaning full geometry from the top to the bottom. Okay. And this is the first, uh, the first problem that you encounter. Uh, because, so it means first you need to classify the, the perfect forms. And then uh, you need to uh, pray that the number of perfect form is not too large in order to be able to uh, compute it. If, of course, again, if you are interested in computing the explicit part of what is written above. So you always have to start with the perfect forms and then go down from there. You can't yes. just start with the yes. that, and, 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 and That would be great if you could. Yeah. So, so you are anticipating uh, the lecture of tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and so if, if you want to, to, to have the full information, uh, yes. 
But then you could be interested only on either the top part or the bottom part of the of your CW complex, so meaning some only some part of the skeleton. And then you could have, as you will see, there are some strategies which allow you to uh, uh, only compute, for instance, the bottom part of the uh, of your uh, of your space. Okay. And uh, uh, as uh, I, I will describe it uh, tomorrow, it is also possible to use the skeleton, I mean the filtration given by the skeleton, in order to decrease uh, the complexity of the computation. <coughs> so in fact, the, the, the skeleton here uh, will correspond also to the, find the filtration by the skeleton will correspond to the filtration by the perfection rank for uh, for lattices in the Voronoi complex. But nevertheless, even with uh, those tools, uh, I mean, you could end up with uh, a, a very large number of uh, forms. So as uh, Renaud explained uh, last week, so, so far, I mean, we are currently uh, with uh, ongoing work of uh, Dutour and uh, Van der Den. Uh, we are apparently very close uh, of the full uh, classification of uh, rank nine uh, perfect forms. So at least for the beauty of the result, uh, with uh, several billions, okay? But uh, very obviously, I mean, we, I mean, it's pointless for the, our computations. I mean, uh, so you have to, uh, to invent, invent a new method. So even for uh, uh, rank eight, uh, it's already, uh, already very large. But nevertheless, you, you should not be afraid necessarily of those numbers. Because everything depends, I mean, it uh, depends of the, of the complexity of the computation for each form. And uh, I, I will show you uh, uh, this, uh, I will try to show you uh, this uh, tomorrow. Uh, so in general, we know by a result of uh, Bacher and uh, Van Verden uh, that uh, the, the number of rank n perfect forms uh, uh, grow exponentially, so even close to double exponential, I think, but at least uh, exponentially. Uh, and so, okay, so, in, so you can imagine in rank 10, rank 11, okay, that's, yeah. So as you know, I mean, Okay, those, you, you have to think that this will give you the top part of your cellular complex. Okay. So here, for let's say n equals 8, you are in a, a 36 dimensional real space. And uh, you could end up with, uh, let's say, polyhedron with a billion faces. So you can imagine what will be the geometry in the middle. So it's completely out of reach. Even likely even with a quantum computer, by the way. Uh, but of course, if you uh, take into account the action of GLN, you can decrease the, the complexity. But uh, again, it depends of uh, of the perfect form. And uh, I will explain why and how uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I, I will stop there. Yes, but uh, it is there. The, the relative is. Older. Yeah. 
So it is this mod out by by the action of gamma. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, I mean, when when you uh, when you uh, want to uh, uh, to deal with the, the explicit computations, I mean, the only Again, I mean, you, you can work as a black box. You, the only thing that you know is that all the machinery is in place, that you have all the nice properties, that you have the retract, that you have uh, compactness, co-compactness, blah, blah. And uh, then you know that you will, be applied, you, you will be able to apply all the machinery in order to recover the, uh, uh, the homology of GLN and modules, that you will be able to recover the homology of Borel-Serre, I mean the, the Borel-Serre duality. And uh, once you have the machinery in place, you can almost forget the machinery. And you can, you just need to deal with this, ob this object and try to understand how we can perform the computations explicitly. And then, of course, from a a, comp a pure com purely computational point of view, uh, how to deal with the computations. Because if you do it uh, the wrong way, I mean, you, you will end up with uh, years of computation, and you will not see the end of uh, what you want to compute. 